Hey, we're Nicole and Miko, and we have just landed in Japan. We are starting our exploring with the capital city, but we have a problem with Tokyo. Tokyo is a beautiful blend of cultural tradition and ultra modern. Look, look at that! Are we in space? We're blasting up! And everything in between. Oh my god. That is so good. So, when we did our research of what to do in Tokyo, well. Let's just say we got a little overwhelmed. And when you don't have a lot of time in Tokyo, it's important to make sure you visit only the oh, best sites. Wow. So in today's video, we're going to be taking around some of Tokyo's top sites. This is the busiest crossing in the whole world. And let you know what we think is a must do. All the money we paid to come here, I would spend just to come to this room. And what we think is just not worth it. So, um, honey, where are we? <laughs> so stay tuned because some of these places just might surprise you. I know absolutely nothing about manga. But I love bookstores, and this cat feels like a bookstore. <laughs> Look at you. You're so cool. Blending in. <laughs> I mean, it's not necessary to come here, but it's pretty great. This is like the most Japanese thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Guys, we have made it beside the huge and iconic Tokyo Tower. I don't think I can even capture it all on camera. Mm -mm. But it is uh, very tall and very orange. <laughs> it's the first thing that pops out, Abby. <laughs> We're gonna see if we can go up to the mid deck yeah. to get a better look at the city of Tokyo. That was very squishy, but we got here and the line went super fast. Tokyo has a, such an incredible skyline and I think it's crazy because Tokyo has like 14 million people living in it. I don't know if that's like a central area or includes the suburbs, but I think it's probably just a central area. There's a lot of people here and somehow they keep the city so clean. I just don't understand how that's possible with so many people. Perhaps even more amazing to me actually is the fact that the streets aren't congested. Like from here I can see the streets really well and there's just not a lot of cars on it. Like. I think that's because like the train systems are so excellent that people don't do a lot of driving here. Where are the cars? Nicole was saying it seems like it's like a, a day of like international no driving day today. I feel like small towns in Canada are less con are more congested. Yeah. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually. So what we learned is that the Tokyo Tower was actually made as a radio tower and it still is I think today used as a radio tower. It is the second tallest tower in all of Tokyo. Actually, I think in all of Japan. Or if you look at it right there. <laughs> and it, but it's like bright orange or like red. And I guess it's like to be in line with the international like aviation standards here because it's such a tall tower. Do you prefer the Eiffel Tower or the Tokyo Tower? The Tokyo Tower, 1000%. But that's because really? I'm not a big fan of Paris. <laughs> I think that's an unpopular opinion, but I seriously don't like Paris very much. <laughs> This feels like the most Tokyo thing ever. You can do a VR bungee jump from the Tokyo Tower. <laughs> yeah, it looks kind of cool. They just like swing you down this way with your goggles on. And I'm assuming it looks like you're falling. So very close to Tokyo Tower is a beautiful temple site called Zojoji Temple. It's just a stunning place. It's a really, really big complex. They've got some beautiful garden areas. And of course, like the main temple is just stunning. And you can get this gorgeous view of the temple and Tokyo Tower right next to one another. So it's definitely worth a quick stop if you are going all the way to Tokyo Tower already. I don't think you can really go inside the temple, but it's, yeah. I think it's worth it to just walk yeah. around and just like Feel peacefulness feels very here, in peaceful. the middle of a big city. Yeah, it feels very peaceful, especially after the crowds of Tokyo Tower.
made it to the Tokyo famous Shibuya district and we're right in front of the Shibuya crossing which is just insane. So, uh, there's a lot of people here. There's so many people here. We're just waiting but I think uh, once it goes apparently you can have anywhere between 2,500 to 3,000 people crossing at one time. I guess there's an average of 2.4 million people crossing per day here. <laughs> so it's considered the, oh here we go, the most here we go. easy crosswalk in the world. <laughs> So all directions? Hold on to me. Yeah, we're gonna stick together. It reminds me of Mumbai. <laughs> Except for so many other things. Okay, let's go in the middle. <laughs> so all the cross anywhere. Like all the lights yeah. are red for the for the cars. And then all the pedestrians just go. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty pretty relaxed considering that uh, there's all the flows of traffic yeah. happening at the same time. And on average, 2,500 people here. So if you look around, there's also tons of advertising around this neighborhood. And they say it's like the Times Square of Tokyo. Which is saying something, man. It's cool. It's neat because like, there's obviously lots of tourists like us, but there's also tons of people just going about their day here. Like, they obviously work nearby, and this is just part of their everyday life. What I love about this tourist attraction is that it's free, and you can do it as many times as you want. <laughs> it's like every two minutes, mayhem. Well, Nicole and I have crossed this a few times now to try to get different shots and angles of the crossing. A few as in like 15. And honestly, I'm, this is so far been my favorite thing to do in Tokyo, even though it's completely free. It's just because it's it's just like so exciting and it happens literally every two minutes I think and it's everybody who crosses everyone is just so pumped. Yeah, everyone else is stoked to like be here, being like this iconic spot in Tokyo. It's kind of, it's kind of a cool atmosphere. Right beside Shibuya Crossing is the statue of Hachi. If you don't know the story of Hachi, you should go look it up, but just be prepared to cry. He's like Tokyo or maybe even Japan's most like precious dog. He was known to have followed his owner to, like, to the train station, the train station I think around here, um, every single day for the first two years of his life. He would like literally take his owner there to work and then wait around the area and go home with his owner at the end of the day. But one day when the dog was two, I think two years old, his owner died at work and never came home. And so the dog went to the place where he would drop his owner off to work every single day for the next nine years. It was just like he's like known as like the most loyal dog in all of Japan. Nicole literally cried while like, she was I researching. Can't even, I can't even read blogs like explaining what happened with this dog. Like, I'm just, it's like so I can't even talk about it. I can't talk about it. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful story, and I love how there's a monument here for him. I would normally assume that this is probably like an overrated tourist attraction, but I actually really love the story. It's because the history is so amazing, and I love that it just like it just like talks about the loyalty of dogs. So if you're a dog lover, you just have to come here. Shibuya is not just about the crossing. That is probably what makes this place most famous. But it's also like, it's just a neighborhood. It's a community. So there's lots of really good shopping in this area. Lots of really nice looking restaurants. You can just so, walk yeah. endlessly and just get lost in all the signage and yeah. tons of things going yeah. on. <laughs> Ta-da! Is it a sticker? No. Nope. He's for my phone. Oh, he's a key ring. Awesome. Okay, so we've seen a bunch of these here in Tokyo, but we haven't been into one yet. It's like these rooms where you just come in, you put coins into a machine, and you get like a... What? I don't know what Little toys. Are. Little toys. Gatches. It's so interesting. Like, little this cap. is a huge space. The whole room is just covered in them, and you just walk around, like decide which ones you want, and for anywhere from like one to five hundred yen, basically, you get a little toy. What's interesting to me is there are small children here, but there are also tons of adults who are definitely just as like engaged in this as the little ones. They must be like a collector's thing. It's totally yeah. a collector's thing. Okay. Look at you. You're so cool. Blending in. <laughs> Hold up, we want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of today's video, Vessi. If you have been watching our channel for a while now, then you know that Miko and I are not the kind of people to let bad weather ruin our fun when we're traveling. We've made it, you're finally on Del Diablo. You can see the waterfall, it's beautiful. This is 
very wet experience. If you come here, make sure you're ready to get dressed. We have recently got our hands on our very first pair of waterproof shoes that will make it so much easier to push through the inevitable rainy days like we are about to experience in Tokyo. Vesti shoes are 100% waterproof, which is our favorite feature of these shoes. However, as travelers with very little space to carry our belongings, we also need shoes that are incredibly comfortable, lightweight, packable, and actually look good because we are going to use these shoes for every occasion. We've been wearing our Vessies for a few weeks now, and so far they tick all of the boxes for the makings of awesome travel shoes. If you want to check out the different styles you can buy, click the link in the description down below. All right, we have made it to Team Lab Planets here in Tokyo, which I'm super excited to explore. It's like an interactive art gallery, and consistently online we see it as one of the top things to do here in Tokyo, particularly on a rainy day, which is definitely what we have today. So, let's go explore. So quick tip, if you're gonna come here, make sure you book your tickets in advance, like days in advance. We almost didn't get to come because you have to book far ahead. In this museum, you will walk barefoot as you experience the artworks with your entire body. I think we're coming up to one of the coolest parts.
absolutely incredible. 100% a must do in Tokyo. You gotta do it. This is awesome. Asakusa neighborhood here in Tokyo and we are entering the very busy and very famous Nakamisa street which is a large long shopping street that leads up to a temple that we're gonna see later on but it's a cool place to just feel the vibe of Japan which is busy and like overwhelming a little bit eh? but also so beautiful so gorgeous love the decorations there's tons of Japanese flags out like this place is stunning so Nakamise Street is also a really cool place to come and get some like really traditional souvenirs. There is awesome shopping here. There's also some cool food. We're seeing people eat some food and get some weird drinks. What I'm loving about the street is that it's just one long street. Yeah. And uh, all the shops surrounding the street are all very similar. Like they're like small, like almost like traditional looking yeah. shops. So, but they all sell very different things, I think. Yeah, they each, each have different things. Yeah, and I think if you want some like really cool souvenirs here in Japan, this is a great place to do it. I think we've got some really like traditional souvenirs. Like I've seen some like swords of some kind and some cool like shoes cool and shoes, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So there's definitely some cool um, more classic traditional Japanese things you can get here. On top of of course all the modern stuff that we're used to seeing. I feel like if you want to bring home something that said that you were in Japan, <laughs> do you it, can find do it, here. it here. Such a chaotic street. Oh but I think that was worth it just to feel like you're really like close to everything in Japan all at once. <laughs> Temple is the oldest temple in all of Tokyo. It was born in, born, it was built in I think, six, I think 648. It was very old. A lot of it was destroyed in World War II, but it's been rebuilt. Uh, and it's like one of the most visited religious sites in the whole world. Came across a place that sells charms. You can buy one for traffic safety. I think that's cool. And like passing exams, success in business. It's kind of neat. You just buy charms for like somebody who's doing something really important. And hope that like their dreams come true as an example. Their wishes are coming true. It looks like the ward off evil is a thousand yen, but the wishes come true is 20,000. It's a necklace, that's why. It's fancy. Oh, it's different. <laughs> I thought it was like, you can ward off evil, sure, that'll cost you a thousand yen. But if you want your wish to come true, you better be prepared to pay up. I assume that it's some kind of spiritual cleansing. That's my best guess. So the temple is actually a Buddhist temple, and right now it's being heavily used. There are a lot of people here actually praying and like take, carrying out their like prayer ceremonies, rituals. their rituals. It is a, a, a really cool place to be in, and, and even if you're not Buddhist, you can truly just admire the architecture the, of the grandness of the temple. Yeah, it's the complex that's really just so stunning. So beautiful. This temple is incredible. It's unlike any other Buddhist temple I've ever seen. Look at like the grandeur of this wall and what's behind it. And then even the ceilings, the artwork up there is so gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice to be in here. It's really nice to see everyone line up and then just say their prayers and they head out. They're only in here for like maybe five minutes. It's quick, it's a quick visit. Okay, really quickly, Nicole and Mika from the future here. If you're wondering why we have not explored Shinjuku in this video, it's because we are going to be doing it in the next video at Explored at Night. So make sure you hit subscribe if you want to see the next video of us exploring the wonderful city of Tokyo by night because it is crazy. <laughs> okay, now back to the daytime video. <laughs> we are in Akihabara. It's like a district in Tokyo that attracts a lot of people who are very interested in like manga and anime and video games. 
pretty much all the same things that I'm actually attracted yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm like, where the heck are we? <laughs> the place itself is like its own mini cultural city because you'll see things that you probably would never see anywhere else in the world. It's very interesting. <laughs> I don't know anything about, about anime and manga, to be honest, except for what I see Miko watching <laughs> occasionally. Um, so for someone like me, I'm just like baffled. There's lots of people in like costumes. Yeah. It's, like, it's just really busy. There's like all sorts of things you can do here and like buy and read and yeah. Me personally, this is like one of my big draws for Japan because I love anime and I remember like picking up my first pirated Naruto CD disc <laughs> from my older sister's like oh, friend man. that gave us like Probably one of the, maybe like the that, first few episodes of Naruto ever oh on like DVD. On the DVD, <laughs> and like ever since then, I was hooked. Uh, Hunter Hunter, Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood, of you course. Have to list them, do you? I gotta list them all. <laughs> Attack on Titan. So for me, Akihabara is a very special place. I know absolutely nothing about manga, but I love bookstores, and this kind of feels like a bookstore. <laughs> so, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily need to come here if it was just me, but I enjoy being here. How is it Dragon Ball's 30th anniversary? That makes me feel so old. Like really I remember old. watching Dragon Ball when I was As like super small. You and I when, when I When I was like this age. Times are changing, darling. <laughs> times, are, times flying, that's what's happening. So besides the anime store that we were just in, another big thing that people go for here in Akihabara is going inside the Taito station, which is just like a large arcade building. And it, it looks like, I feel like right now it's like a maze of different games where you can win prizes and... Should we try one? I, I think we should play a little. <laughs> I think so too. I think someone in this arcade is challenging me. Oh god. It's Ken! This is a fight of whoever can button mash the best. <laughs> you lose. You lost. Let's get out of here. <laughs> So what would you think of Akibara? It was actually pretty cool. So I'm like not in the games really at all. Um, but it was really cool to like see everybody else playing. And some people are so intense. Like so intense. It's funny because I've seen like YouTube videos of like how like crazy good some Japanese yeah. like arcade gamers can be. Mm -hmm. And then I've never actually, I never didn't realize Nicole's never seen it before. So to watch oh her expression oh. of just being in <laughs> awe of the human reflexes that are possible. Like, I'm watching people do stuff and I'm like, I can't even see fast enough, I feel like, to even know I'm supposed to be clicking something. And these people are just, they're very, very cool. So I had a great time. I think Akihabara, I think, is, a, is for uh, people who like are really into these kinds of like mangas and yeah. animes and video games, games yeah. electronics. I'm sure there's yeah. lots more that we haven't seen yet. Uh, but I would say that if you're really into that, you definitely got to check out Akihabara. Yeah, and if you're not and your spouse is, just go anyway. It's pretty cool. Yeah, just to have your watch you lose to some random... <laughs> guy playing on uh, Mortal Kombat or Tekken. <laughs> Worth a good evening. <laughs> We have made it to Harajuku. I think this is probably one of the most colorful mm. and eccentric neighborhoods yeah. in all of Tokyo. Yeah. Harajuku is like this really cool youth, underground, vintage fashion scene. Some pieces of clothing that I don't think I, I could ever wear, but people <laughs> here know. can really rock them out. Man, this is cool. It is so busy. There's so many cool looking shops. I'm not sure we totally fit in with the theme, but whatever. <laughs> That's good or? I am this one. Yeah? Oh, new arrival. <laughs> or the boots. I think it's these boots. I can't touch them, but those would suit me. They go up to my hips. <laughs> 
So one of the things that makes Harajuku so interesting is that there are a lot of like themed animal cafes. So there's like lots of these cat cafes. We saw a dog cafe, Shiba cafe. There's just, I think I've even heard there are like hedgehogs and owl cafes around here. So if you're looking for that, Harajuku is a really good place for it. which is a very popular cafe here in Harajuku. The character that they have in Pom Pom Purin is like this pudding golden retriever. Yeah, like this little boy. Uh, he seems pretty like famous here. So we've come to this cafe. It's just a place to get some nice desserts yeah. and puddings and some cool drinks. Yeah, and to order, we have to ring our bell, so... I think we're ready. That's everything. Thank you so much. Look at these drinks, they are so, so cute. cute. They've got like sprinkles and stars and then like this, I think it's chocolate. Oh, that is so good. Is it good? Yeah. Oh, that's good. I feel like this cafe just really embodies Harajuku. Japan. <laughs> a lot of Japan. Mm. Oh my god, it's so cute. Yeah. Look at that. Oh my god. We got waffle with banana, ice cream, and chocolate. I see some almonds on here as well. This looks amazing. You gotta take a picture. Oh yeah, I gotta take a picture first. Woohoo! <laughs> cutie! <laughs> He's pretty cute, eh? Oh my god. Yes. So we asked for the half order. I mean, it's not necessary to come here, but it's pretty great. Mm. There's so many cafes. Just pick one, I'm sure you'll have mm -hmm. a great time. Mm -hmm. All right, final thoughts on Harajuku. This is definitely a very cool spot to come when you are in Tokyo. Some awesome shopping, get a pop into some really neat cafes. Maybe go to like a cat or a dog cafe if you want to. Just spend a few hours meandering around here. Tsukiji Fish Market. This is like the largest fish market in all of Tokyo. It is absolutely giant. It's a really cool place to come and get seafood, of course. Um, you can do big like wholesale shops here if you needed to do that. And I think it's been here in some form or another for like close to a hundred years. This market was really popularized by the intense tuna auctions that they have early, early in the morning. But that section has since moved to another market. I think it's called Toyosu Market. So only the outer portion of Tsukiji Fish Market remains. But that doesn't mean that this place is any less bustling because there are still tons of restaurants and food vendors that you could buy seafood, traditional Japanese goods, and just about anything out here. So a few things have really surprised me so far about the fish market. One is that it doesn't smell like fish. Like it doesn't, I was expecting it to stink, but it doesn't. Another is that it's really clean. Like even like everybody's stalls, they're just so well organized and really, really clean. I'm used to going into like food markets and it being like kind of gross everywhere, but that's really not the case here. Vending machine fish at the fish market, you guys. You can literally put money in here and get like fish eggs and fish balls out of the vending machine. This is like the most Japanese thing I've ever seen. So of course I gotta try some seafood. I know Nicole's not big into seafood, so this is this is a good visit for me. But I got some this is tuna tuna jerky. She, it was only a hundred yen for this little pack, which is great. Look at little snack. Oh, it's so good. Is it yummy? Oh my god, yeah. Oh, hardly tastes like fish. It's good. Mm. It's so sweet. Oh wow. Okay, there's a little bit of fish, but it's almost like you put fish sauce on something. Honestly, really good though. You can have that one. <laughs> but I'm glad I tried. Check this sucker out. I don't know what it is. I think it's like part of like a mussel or a scallop. It's only 300 yen. Three bucks. Oh, wow. That's super good. Wow, it's um, it's like... It's not too 
fishy, if that makes sense. It's not like overwhelmingly like raw, if like that taste of fish. I'm doing a terrible job explaining this, but the point is there's lots of seafood, like street food here, and this is an awesome place to just pick little things from different places. Okay, so the only thing I can eat at the fish market is fish-shaped bread dessert. Because <laughs> I don't like fish. <laughs> so it looks like a fish. It's like a big, like a pancake or a waffle. Yeah, I think it's called a taiyaki. Um, but I guess they do the kind of their own kind here at the fish market. So inside should be red bean paste filling. And I think the outside is made from uh, just flour and water. Oh! Oh my god. That is so good. It's like it's like crispy waffle on the outside and sweet gooiness on the inside. And it's really warm. They cooked it fresh. I had to wait 15 minutes to get it. If you come to the fish market, but you don't eat fish, get one of these. <laughs> okay, so I think this is probably a bit of an unpopular opinion, but I think the Tsukiji fish market is actually kind of missable. Yeah. It's really touristy. Yeah, it, it, it kind of lost its charm when the inner yeah. market or the core of it, the tuna auction, yeah. went to a different market. And then the leftover is just a lot of uh, shops that are geared more towards tourists yeah. and along with that a lot of tourist pricing yeah and I think that the shops like it's beautiful and it's great and Nico obviously love the food yeah um, but it, it just I feel like it's lost the culture to it like the charm isn't there so I don't know I think personally it's probably missable mm, mate, yeah if you really want excellent high-level seafood then come and eat just be ready to pay a pretty penny Welcome to another amazing entertainment district here in Tokyo. It's called Odaiba. Odaiba district is actually on an artificial island built around Tokyo Bay. We have just arrived in Odaiba and already I can see some something happening over there behind me. I didn't realize that, but Cirque du Soleil is going on. We happened to come at the same time that Cirque du Soleil ended, so now everyone has come to the big mall across the street. Yeah. Diver City Tokyo. And I think we have all kind of come for the same thing. Yeah, this is, uh, I think it's a big reason why people are here in Diver City, so check this out. <laughs> so we are in front of the giant Gundam statue. It's very iconic here in Tokyo. Nico to tell me what a Gundam was though. Can you tell everyone what a Gundam is? Right, a Gundam is a like character type from a famous anime called Gundam Wing. I think they have all different variations now. I remember watching it when I was a kid. For me it's really cool to come to Tokyo and see the Gundam like statue in person. That's Again with Nicole. Cool. <laughs> Daiba, there's always something going on. So obviously got the big Gundam behind me here. There's some sort of like play or like sound dance, like dancing and sounds over there. We got Cirque du Soleil over there. And then I hear like a lot of drumming from that direction. Uh, I think there's maybe a festival going on over there. Yeah. I don't know. Daiba is really a cool place to visit. You see all sorts of like different events and activities yeah. and festivals. Yeah. Come participate in just about anything or go shopping at the giant mall next to us. The other thing that you can find at Odaiba is actually the Rainbow Bridge and the Statue of Liberty, as it's called here. Um, there's also tons of festivals, like we're seeing multiple festivals going on right now as we are here. Um, so, although I wouldn't say like come to Odaiba for sure if you're coming to Tokyo, I would suggest like take a look at what festivals are happening here, and if there is something really cool coming, it would be a great place to come. You've got some beautiful views, and it would definitely be worth a visit. If you can believe it, there is so much more to do in Tokyo than we could fit into this one video. If you want to know the best things to do at night here in Tokyo, make sure you subscribe and watch our next video where we explore Shinjuku and find the smallest bar we have ever seen. It is so cool. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. I think I did it in one day. <laughs> Who am I? It's like I've been vlogging the entire week and I'm a pro. <laughs>